of America live on uh, online. She is Barista Gertrude Onoha, a licensed immigration attorney and the founder of the law offices of Gertrude Onoha in New York. She has been admitted to the Nigerian Bar and New York State Bar and has practiced law since 1994. She obtained her bachelor's degree in law from the University of Nigeria and Suka. She has a double master's from the University of Lagos and Benjamin Cardoso School of Law in New York, where she specialized in alternative dispute resolution. She's also admitted to the 10th Circuit Court of Appeals in the United States. She began her law practice as a trial attorney in Nigeria with the prestigious law offices of Kainde Shofola SAM. She later partnered with her husband and attorney at Hesi Onoha and partners in Lagos, Nigeria, where she headed the civil litigation department. Sister Onoha received Christ as her savior as a teenager and was mentored as a youth choir member in the Prime Bible Church, Bagada, Lagos. Over the years, she has served in critical leadership capacity within the music, youth, and campus ministry as a youth and young adult and orchestra director of the Deeper Bible Church. She founded International Student for Christ, United States registered non-profit organization that enables researchers, scholars, and professionals globally to connect with the gospel of Christ. He's also the founder of the Lawyers for Christ in America, a group that seeks to introduce Christ to the legal profession. She is currently serves as a member of the Deeper Life USA GCK Committee. With great joy and excitement, I bring to you this morning our celestial guest speaker, Barrister Gertrude Onoha. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Impact Academy. Amen. Let's put our heads together for prayers. Father, we thank you very much for this wonderful morning. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us together. Almighty God, we thank you for all that we've been hearing since the beginning of the Easter retreat. And even today, Father, you have blessed us tremendously. Mighty God, as we come into your presence this morning, Father, we are depending on you. Father, we are looking up to you. Father, we ask you will help us. You will speak to us. You will minister to us. Father, I commit my young brothers and sisters into your hands. I ask that, Lord in heaven, all the questions of their hearts, Father, you will answer their questions questions and oh lord you will bless them oh god through this ministration today father we look up to you and we thank you so much because we believe that father you will help us in our own generation to make a difference for your glory in jesus name praise the lord Brethren, I thank God for the opportunity of being here this morning. And I just want to give a shout out and a thank you to our Father in the Lord, Pastor W.F. Kumui, who has been a real exemplary character in this generation. Thank you for the opportunity to minister. By the grace of God, the Lord is using you and the Lord will continue to use you. I also want to thank God for all our leaders that have made this wonderful conference uh, feasible. <clears throat> Brethren, today we are going to be talking about the topic, making a difference like Christ. It's very important that you look at the phrase, like Christ. Before I proceed, <clears throat> how many of us would like to make a difference in our generation? Raise up your hands. Praise the Lord. Wonderful. And how many of us want to know how to make a difference wherever we find ourselves? Show by your hands. Amen. The Lord 
will give you the grace to make a difference in this generation in Jesus name. So as we proceed into our topic today, we are talking about how to make a difference like Jesus. Keep in mind that <clears throat> a lot of people in the world today are making impact in different aspects of life. But the focus of our discussion today is how we can make a difference like Jesus. That is very critical, that last phrase, like Jesus. Can I just tell you something that many years ago, I sat where you were sitting and I was young. I heard the word just like you're hearing it. And honestly, I was dead. I didn't even know what I was doing. I went to church with my mom. I was hearing nothing. You know, my ears were not hearing anything. In fact, I was sleeping when the word of the Lord came. And they said, if you want to give your life to Christ, stand up. My mom tapped me and I stood up. Now, I stood up not because I wanted to stand up, but, you know, out of obedience. But I want to tell you something, that that was the beginning of my journey with the Lord. I would go forward sometime in 1988, hearing the word of the Lord from the man of God, reading books. I realized that even though I proclaimed I was a Christian, I wasn't really born again. By God's grace, I still remember that evening when I knelt down before the Lord and I asked Jesus to come into my heart. And there I settled it with the Lord. Praise the Lord. And if you're here today, you want to make a difference in this generation, it all begins with Christ Jesus. Jesus is the starting point. And that's why I'm sharing my story with you, that when you give your life to Christ, he will help you unlock all the goodness of God in you. Without further ado, let's delve into our wonderful topic this morning, which is making a difference like Christ. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. You see, Jesus is the greatest figure that has made any impact or difference in this world of today. I'm telling you that Jesus is the greatest leader that has made impact. And as we proceed, I just want to say that I'm going to be using the word difference, impact, making a mark interchangeably because they all connote what we're trying to portray. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Matthew chapter 23. It says, and Jesus went all about Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing all manner of sicknesses and all manner of disease among the people and his fame went throughout all Syria and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken in diverse diseases and torment and those that were possessed with devils and those that were lunatic and those that were with the palsy and he healed them and there followed him a great multitude of people from Galilee from Decapolis and from Jerusalem and from Judea and beyond Jordan. This is what I call impact. You see, our master Jesus, he made impact. He made a difference in the lives of the people. He preached, he taught, he healed, he helped the people. Brethren, in discussing this point this morning, I'm going to focus on three subtopics. Number one, what does it mean to make a difference like Christ? Because we cannot just assume that we understand that phrase. What you may be thinking may be different from what the Bible is saying. So we want to be on the same page. What does it mean to make a difference like Christ? Number two, we're going to consider making a difference, drawing inspiration from the life of Christ. Remember, Christ is our perfect example, right? Christ is the greatest of the greatest. And the impact that he has made, even 2,000 years has elapsed, and yet we're still drawing from that impact. We're still enjoying that impact and we will yet continue to enjoy the impact. So if there is anyone who has made a difference to humanity, that is the person of Jesus. And we're so excited this morning because we're going to learn from this character and we're going to really be blessed in Jesus' name. And finally, we're going to look at how. Everybody say how. How? That is a very important word. How we can make a difference like Christ in our world today. So we delve into subtopic number one, understanding what does it mean to make a difference like Christ. Now, 
we trying to make a difference means number one so it could mean a lot of things but the first and the foremost thing is that we are called to be transformed and to be the salt of our generation without that transformation there could be no difference there could be no sustainable difference so it is only when we are transformed and commissioned and empowered that we can really go out there in the grace of god with the boldness of christ to make a difference in our generation the bible says in the book of matthew chapter 5 verse 13 it says ye are the salt of the earth but if the salt has lost its savor, where which shall it be salted? It is therefore good for nothing, but that it should be cast out and be trodden under the foot of men. The next way that we can make a difference, or what a difference means, is service to God and humanity. And picture Peter and his counterpart raising even the guy that was lame. And immediately that happened, people were amazed and people gathered and see what happened on that day that is what i call making a difference acts chapter 4 verse 4 the bible says but many of those who heard the word believed and the number of men and the number of men came to about four about five thousand a lot of people received christ just by virtue of one miracle that is an amazing impact also impact, a difference could also mean knowing and carrying out our assignment every one of us every man that is born on the face of the earth is endowed and we all have different gifts that god has given us in our lifetime now whether that gift is going to come out is up to you and i and whether we're going to even use it is going to be up to us because the bible said god has given unto us all things that pertain to life and to godliness in the book of luke chapter 1 verse 38 we see mary who said be it done unto me according to thy word mary received even the word of the lord and she fulfilled her purpose and when we obey the Lord, we are also making a difference. The three Hebrew children, they made a wonderful impact because through their standing for the Lord, Nebuchadnezzar said, all nations must begin to worship the God of Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego because they made a difference by virtue of obedience to God in a godless society. And that can be found in the book of Daniel chapter 3, verse 20 to 30. What about Joseph? What about Joseph? By taking a stand against immorality, by taking a stand against uh, 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 wickedness, Joseph was thrown into jail. And from there, he became the prime minister of Egypt. And what happened? The Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 41, verse 55, I'm going to read. And it says, when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried unto Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said unto the Egyptians, go unto Joseph, what he says to, to you, do. And the famine was all over the face of the earth. And Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold unto the Egyptians. And the famine was sore in the land of Egypt. And all countries came unto Joseph from unto Egypt to Joseph for to buy corn, because that the famine was sore in all the land. Joseph became a global figure by the grace of God, and he fought hunger through his wisdom. There's a lot that we can do in this world today. And I'm, we're going to show you how. And also, we also see that making a difference could be you being a purposeful and impactful leader. It means taking territories for the Lord. It means providing a solution to our profession by virtue of being excellent, being good at what you do. Whether it be in the arts, in science, engineering, biomedical science, business, whatever your calling is in your secular world, you can turn it around and use it for the glory of God. We're told that the Daniel was 10 times better. And with the knowledge that Daniel had, hello, Daniel used his knowledge to interpret dreams accurately. And through the interpretation of these dreams, 
he was able to save a lot of people that could have been killed. Not only that, when Darius was confused, you know, Daniel was recommended as a man who had light. He was so good, and he was able to help his generation. Brethren, the question then becomes, why do we need to even make a difference like Christ in this world? Why? Why don't I just sit down and pass through time? I go to school. I graduate. I get married. I have children. And I live a life, and then I die. Is that what God wants for us? Why do we even, why are we concerned about making a difference like Christ? Number one, it will glorify God because God has put a lot of virtue in you. God has put a lot of goodness in you. The Bible says, let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. So you see, when our good works is seen, when our virtue come out and we're providing solution, men will glorify God. Men will worship the Lord. Praise the Lord. And that scripture can be found in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. When, why do we need to make a difference in our world today? To bring souls to the Lord. And we don't need to look too far. We can see the testimonies of our Father in the Lord. God is using him to impact lives. When, when, we, when, we, when we become different like Christ, then we can make the required impact. And if you look at Acts 29, verse 30, 33, you will see that when Peter healed the man called Aeneas, the Bible says, all that dwell in Lydon and Saron, they saw him and they turned to the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And one of the reasons why we really have to make sure that we use our gifting for the earth, uh, why we should live for Christ and make a difference is because we are all gifted and we are also accountable for our gifting. And also we can provide benefit to our generation. Finally, we see that there's a lot of vices in our world today. And these vices are increasing. If you look at the statistics, you will see that right now, a lot of exposure to pornographic images in our world today. Many years ago, as far back as the statistics is showing us that, in, as at 1998, we had at least 14 million web pages of pornographic images. But today, it has skyrocketed. We have 213, two points, I beg your pardon, 2.3 billion loads of pornographic images being bombarded in our generation. That is to show you how the, 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 the vices are increasing. What do we say about drugs and alcohol? What do we say about even uh, social media distraction? Social media distraction. Social media is good, but the distraction is growing by the day. We are told that for every day, we have 3.2 billion, not million, e photos are being, are being thrown at us every day. 3.2 billion on a daily basis. And then we have 720,000 hours of video being thrown at us every day. So we see the moral decadence in society. Brethren, we have to cry out. What about drug addiction? Many have been killed by virtue of drug addiction. Look at the statistics, 15 to 49 years old. The United States topped the chart with 20.7%, followed by Europe. It's a global problem. It's a global problem. Alcohol and drug use disorders. And then what about suicide? What about hopelessness? Brethren, we cannot afford to sit down in the comfort of our homes. We have to arise. We have to do something for our generation. Our voices must be heard. John the Baptist came. He has shouted. He has prepared the way of the Lord. This is our time. We have to shout for the Lord. We cannot keep our voice down. We cannot say, oh, I'm a professional. Therefore, let me make all the money and go. Whatever, wherever we find ourselves, the Bible says, whatever thy hand finded it to do, do it with all thy might. If you are a doctor, use that avenue of seeing patients to serve the Lord. If you are a lawyer like myself, by the grace of God, we meet with scholars 
I remember one of the students we ministered to, she was at the brink of suicide and she wanted to kill herself. She was feeling so frustrated because her PhD dissertation was not moving the way it should, coupled with the death of her father. By the grace of God, through our interaction with her, God using us, she decided not to kill herself. What about those who said they're not giving their lives to the Lord because of one problem or the other? By God's grace, through our interaction, helping them by virtue of the profession, making a difference in the lives of these people. So the next point we are going to now is, how do we draw inspiration from the life of Christ? Hallelujah. I'm so excited about this point because that is where we learn about impact. That's where we learn about leadership. And let's dive into it. Point two, drawing some inspiration from the life of Christ. Number one, Christ glorified God in all that he did. So you see, the thing with making a difference like Christ is that we're not making a name for ourselves, right? We're not like the people of the Tower of Babel who said, let us make a name for ourselves. No. We're not like Nebuchadnezzar who said, oh, I, Nebuchadnezzar, I, I built this house. No. We're not even like Herod who the Bible said, this is the voice of a God. Or even like the Pharisee who said, I'm not like other men. We're not making a difference so that we can say, oh, we're not like other men. We're making a difference, number one, because like Jesus, we want to glorify the Father. And that's why Jesus said that I have glorified thee on earth. So glorifying God is very paramount if we will make a difference in our generation. It's all about God. It's all about pleasing God. What does it mean to glorify God? Number one, to, to get his favor, to get his approval yeah. to his glory. Amen. Number two, how did Jesus do it? Let's look at it. The next way Jesus did it was that Jesus knew his purpose and his calling. Jesus knew his purpose and his calling. Miles Morrow said, when purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. When you have the gifting, but you don't know why you have that gifting, you don't know why God has given you that voice, you tend to abuse it because you don't know the purpose. But Jesus knew his purpose. And that is why he said in the book of Luke chapter 19, verse um, 9, he says, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. And that was his focus. Jesus knew that every day of his life. And even when they tried to sidetrack him, he would not. He knew it and he was focused on his purpose. Your purpose is the reason for why you are alive. Amen. The purpose is a reason for something. God has called you for a purpose. You need to know that purpose. It is your responsibility to look for that purpose. And then we go to the next principle we can draw from Christ. Jesus was prepared. Everybody say prepared prepared. Jesus was prepared for his calling. Oh, no wonder. In the book of um, uh, um, Luke chapter uh, 4 verse 18, you see, the, Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. You know, he was ready. Can I tell you something? When readiness and opportunity collide, we have something called success. In our world today, people are saying, I'm not lucky. There is nothing like luck. You must prepare. Jesus prepared before he embarked on his ministry. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. No wonder he had the boldness to say in Nazareth, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Brethren, preparation could mean different things for different people. You being in this program, you are preparing. You going to school, that is preparation. Preparation could mean praying for sanctification, praying for Holy Ghost baptism, because you will need all that to make an impact in this generation. It could mean going for conferences. It could mean reading those books. It could mean taking that course. It could mean looking for a mentor. You got to sharpen your pencil. You got to hone your gifts. Joseph honed his gift. And when the time came for him to interpret, he wasn't going all over the place. No, oh, Father, help me. He was ready to go. 
He interpreted the dream and he gave recommendation and he got the job. Tell somebody, be prepared. I will be prepared to serve my generation in Jesus' name. So we see that Jesus was always prepared. Now what else do we see? We see that Jesus was disciplined. And when it comes to discipline, the highest form of discipline is self-discipline. That is the discipline that you can inflict on yourself. If you're going to be a leader, if you're going to be somebody that is going to make a difference with other students, you must have what is called self-discipline. And that is the ability to control yourself and make yourself do hard work or behave in a particular way without needing anyone to tell you. And we see Jesus, the Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He did not jump down from the cross. He knew his calling and he endured it. Self-discipline is something that you need. If you are here and your mom has to tell you, hey, John, go study. That means you, you're not driven. If you are driven and you want to be the best of the best in your school, you will burn the midnight candle. You will come for a program like this. You will do what it takes to be successful by the grace of God so that you can make a difference. Jesus was driven and Jesus was a doer. You know, in our generation today, talk is cheap. People can talk. People have intentions. I want to be, you know, the, fan, the person who is going to find the cure for cancer. Hello. As you are doing the talk, you got to walk the walk. You got to walk the walk. Jesus was a doer. Jesus was somebody who executed his project. Look at what the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 10, verse 38. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So Jesus was a doer. Many have intentions. Many have dreams. I have a dream to do this and to do that. Hello, you got to start working on your dream. You got to start doing something in your campus. You got to start making a difference wherever you find yourself. Don't wait. And some people say, oh, when I get, when I graduate and I become, you know, a medical doctor, I will find a cure for cancer. Hello, in that lab where you are, still preparing to become a doctor. You can make a difference. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus was unstoppable. Even though there were hindrances, he was unstoppable. Jesus had a very strong prayerful life. He had a, a very strong prayer life. That's very important. Because in this generation, we see a lot of young people who are not able to pray. But Jesus was prayerful. Why do we need to pray? You need to pray to know who you are. You need to pray to unlock the goodness of God in you. Inside you, there is riches, there is wealth. Some of us think the wealth is outside. It's locked inside you. But when you pray, God will help you. Not only that, we see that Jesus was a very compassionate leader. He was also very exemplary. And we see that Jesus completed his task. So these are things that Jesus did. He completed his task. And I want to focus on this completion of tasks because we have a lot of people today who are not willing to graduate, who are not willing to finish their task, their assignment. Their, there is no success when we don't finish our task. Jesus went to the cross and he finished the work. Hallelujah. Tell somebody by you, complete your task. Tell your neighbor, complete your task. Amen. Having said this, we're going to dive into our point number three, which is how can we make a difference even in this world today? We have seen some examples of Christ. Number one, I'm just going to run through these ways we can make a difference. Again, it starts with a relationship with God. And I shared my story with you. Listen, relationship with God is not going to church. Relationship with God is when you kneel down and ask Jesus to come into your life and you repent of the sins of your life. Relationship is when you build your intimacy with God. This is between you and God. If you're going to make a difference like Christ, oh, you must have that intimacy with the Lord. Because when the Spirit of God comes upon you, He will help you. He will tell you what to do. He will show you how to do it. And number two, we must guard our mind. And like I told us, there is lots of information coming out today. If we don't guard our mind, it's going to be a problem. You must hone your gift. We've talked about that. 
You must show self-care. You must be diligent. You must be hardworking. You must build stamina in the place of prayer. You must be faithful in little things. Many want to climb the pulpit. Many want to stand tall, but they are not faithful in little things. You must be faithful when no man can see you. And then when you are faithful in little things, the Lord will advertise you. Now, I just want to show us a very interesting character in the Bible. Maybe we know about this girl. Her name, we were not told, but we were told she was a maid, a captive of Naaman's wife. And the Bible said she gave information that led to the healing of a great man. What information are we sharing today, the youth of this generation? The youth of our generation, many of us are sharing all kinds of information that does not even help you, your neighbor, or your generation. But this little girl who was a captive, she shared one powerful information that changed the life of a man, a great general. What about Cornelius? He was a silent influencer, a giver. And when the time came, he summoned his family and they heard the word of God. Oh, what about Mary? We know about Mary. Mary gave herself. She submitted herself to Jesus so that Jesus can use her. What about Paul in the Bible? Paul was an attorney. He was a lawyer. And he wrote to third of the New Testament about 13 books out of 27. He used his gifting, his writing skills. Many of us can write here today, but what are you writing on the internet? Some of us are gossiping. Some of us are telling tales. We're not making any difference. Why don't you write something that will change the life of somebody? Brethren, the Lord is calling us to make a difference. You can make a difference in your school, in your lab, in your profession, in any, in your church, in your fellowship. You can make a whole lot of difference. How about on the internet? Don't let the internet use you. Be a user of the internet. Tell your neighbor, don't let the internet use you. You use the internet for the glory of God. Finally, as we we'll pass our ways this evening, this morning, sorry, I want to read something that Miles Morrow said. And this thing is very serious. Miles Morrow said something. He said, the graveyard is the richest place on the surface of the earth. Because there you will see books that were never published. Ideas that were never harnessed. Songs that were never sung and drama pieces that were never acted. These are things that are locked inside the head and the human being body. Inside our body, we have a lot. But if we don't bring it out, our generation will not be blessed. We need to bless our generation. Finally, I want us to, to see that God has called us to do great things. My brothers, my sisters. God has called us. The Bible says, ye are a chosen generation. God has chosen you. Don't be afraid. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. The Bible says, we are called forth. He has called you. What else do you need to make a difference in your campus? What else do you need to make a difference in your youth fellowship? You are called forth to show the glory of God. And as you do that, looking at the life of Christ, the Lord will help you. The Lord will help me. In our time, our voices will be heard. John the Baptist has screamed, he has shouted in his generation, he's gone. It's your time. It's your turn to make a difference for the Lord. Before you know it, the acting will be over. Our time on earth will be over. We're not here forever. This time that we have, let's use it for the glory of God. Let's bow our heads in prayer. This morning, we have heard about making a difference. Don't say I'm too young. Don't say later, I will make a difference. You don't know how much time you have on earth. And even if you had all the whole time, someday the Lord, the owner of the time will come and he will say, give an account of your time here on earth. Don't say I'm a professional. Later, I will make a difference. While being a professional, make a difference. Tell the Lord that, Father, I want you to help me to be somebody who can make a difference for my generation. Let's bow our heads to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for this hour. I thank you for as many who are giving their lives to you now. As many who are saying, I want to make a difference. As many who are confessing their sins. Because we know that the blind cannot lead the blind. If we don't know you, how are we going to make a difference? If we are bound by pornography and masturbation and immorality, 
things and the internet and many things are churning us around. How are we going to make a difference? Holy Spirit, we are praying. As many that are bound by a lot of addiction, we release them today and we say, Father, you will give us the strength to go forth and make a difference for our generation, just as Jesus made a difference and is still serving today. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.